Hey guys, welcome to Biscuits Told to War. Today we're going back to basics and what we're going to do today is have a 4 versus 4 online 31k Rome versus Rome slog out battle. Now it's been a while since I've put up one of these standard battles on the channel. The last couple of battles there's been pikes involved, there's been Primarian builds, been a bit of entertainment but what I wanted to do today is go back to basics, have a look at your standard 31k Rome versus Rome armies and then also have a look at those tactics, tips and bits and pieces the way the other channel was nearly about a year ago. So what we're going to do, we're going to go for myself who I am playing as the Julii and I'm playing alongside my uh, clan member Lucius C. Sulla and we've also got alongside us a member from the Wolves clan, uh, Exager and last but not least we've got an ex-member from the Brotherhood clan, uh, Tigrans or Tigranes. Now I'll just quickly break down their builds, their armies and what they've got. It's really simple what everyone's really got at the end of the day. I've gone for uh, 13 Urbans, 1 Legendary First Cohort and 6 Praetorian Cav. Tig has gone for 14 Urbans and 6 Praetorian Cav. And I believe he's put an extra 2 Chevron upgrade on one of his Cav units. If we have a quick little glance at Lucius, again he's gone for your standard 14-6, that's 14 Urbans and 6 Praetorian Cohorts, all gold gold. And last but not least, uh, the Wolves member, something slightly different to him, he's gone for his 6 Praetorian Cav, which is standard, but he's also got a really big peeler screen. He's got two Legendary First Cohorts and also a Town Watch. Now, when it comes to Rome versus Rome, what's going to win this? It's going to be down to the Peeler Duel, and it's going to be down to how you position your troops, and lastly, how the cab charges go in. So if you can do those three things, or you can win in one of those three areas, that's going to give you an advantage in the actual game. So let's have a look to see who we're actually playing up against. Uh, there should be four people hopefully turning up at any time now. There we go. We're going up against King Marcus from the, the King's Clan and he's gone for again a standard 14-6 build. There's also another member here now, I'm not sure who he is. He's part of the, the COR Clan, uh, First Prime. Now this could be SR, I could be mistaken, but he's also gone for a 14-6 build. That's 14 Urbans and 6 Praetorian Cohorts. Then we've got Spartan Leonidas from the Brotherhood Clan. He's got five Praetorian Cav, which you can just about see in the background. Uh, one Archer, which is tucked into this Urban Cohort, followed by um, 14 Urbans. So he's basically sacrificed one of his Praetorian Cohorts for a uh, an Archer, and therefore that's left him a bit of extra money, and he's been able to probably shove a couple of extra upgrades either on his Praetorian Cav or on his Urbans. And last but not least, we've got Assad's Fist. Assad Fist, he again is in the Brotherhood Clan and he's gone for a 14-6 build. So uh, lots of people gone for 14-6 builds. There's going to be loads of Urbans on the battlefield. There's going to be loads of Praetorian Cav doing their stuff. So it's going to be really interesting to see how this pans out and actually who can win the Peeler battles, who can output position one another and who can get in the decent cab charges. So the opening gambit, all of us are going to all group together. Um, prime or first prime is coming straight for me. Now the formation that he had before, he had no units and loose formation which to me usually indicates that what he's going to do, he's going to put his guys into some sort of testudo and play maybe quite defensively. So we'll see exactly what's going on here. So. I've got my guys into my formation here, as you can see, I've got three units in loose formation. All of my peeler is ready to go on these first three units. And he's now chucked one of his units forward and put them into Testudo. This is to act as a peeler shield and basically absorb all my peeler. So if I fire my peeler into this unit, it should be wasted. But the guy has made a mistake. If you have a little look, he's been a bit slow getting his unit into Testudo and also his Testudo has got his back facing me. So let's have a look to see what happens. He's got 82 men and that's standard for an urban cohort unit. My guys in a second are going to unleash the peeler and you can see he's still in, he's practically in the Testudo, he's nearly there but he's got his back turned to me and because he's got his back turned to me he's going to do easy pickings. So let's have a look what happens. I've got one unit chucking peeler 
it goes right into the back and that is two volleys that I've done and that's gone from 82 down to 54 I then turn off the auto fire but there you go you can see even though that unit has gone into the studio it's lost an incredible amount of units uh, troops in that one unit there he's trying to turn his testudo around just to make sure he doesn't make that mistake twice but there you go that's something uh, bear in mind that even if a unit goes into studio you can still fire at it if it's got its back turned to you so once he's done that what I've decided to do is probably stand still and just wait for him to come towards me a little move that uh, the wolves player has done he's actually chucked forward his town watch and the reason why he's done that is try and absorb some peeler at the end of the day um, but King Marcus hasn't fallen for that trick he's taken his units off auto fire therefore he's not going to waste his peeler into these town watch so this guy is going to move forward first prime again he's chucking his peeler into my guys which indicates he's now in range I'm now going to manually fire my peeler, not into this testudo, of course, but into these units. And the way I'm doing it, I'm clicking on the unit to attack, then clicking backspace. So effectively, it will initiate the first attack, which is the peeler, and then it will stop after that. And as you can see, I'm doing more damage on him than he is on myself, and that's because my guys are in loose formation, his guys are in tight formation. So this unit's down to 62. Um, so it shows you he's lost 20 men already. So he's throwing off his peeler. What he's going to now do is jump back into Studo, which is a fairly standard thing to do. The Town Watch from Wolf's player is going to run forward. Again, King Marcus hasn't fallen for that. He's got his units with his peeler turned off. But this guy's got his peeler turned on. So what's going to happen? He's going to loose all of his peeler into this Town Watch, which is an absolute waste, of course, because... This town watch probably cost about 250 denarii to field. One of these urbans, gold gold, you're probably talking about best part, 1,500 denarii. And a lot of its uh, power, a lot of its cost, I believe, of that unit is down to its peeler. So effectively, at the end of the day, he's wasting a lot of money by chucking his peeler into that unit. So the next thing we're gonna do, I'm gonna move my guys into loose formation. Again, I've still got some peeler left. I'm going to try and throw it into this unit. I've made a bit of a... Oh no, that's not myself. The, the Wolf's play, although he's been really tactically good with his uh, town watch, he's left the peeler on and he's just launching his peeler right into this testudo, which isn't a great move. So what I'm going to try and do is now that I've used up my units with a uh, peeler, I'm going to get this one unit into Studo and push him forward because I've seen the mistake that he's made. It looks like he's left his units of Peter on auto fire. So I'm hoping that what's going to happen is when he gets into range, he's going to either chuck his peeler into this unit or into my loose formation. And that's exactly what's going on, as you can see. His peeler has been thrown straight into that Testudo. So as far as the Testudo and Peeler battle goes, I'd say I'm comfortably winning it on my little side here. Let's have a little glance at what's going on over here. So Tig has sent his units over here. They're facing where the action is. So the uh, Praetorium uh, Cav, they've got their backs turned to his unit and they're facing as if they're going to strike in this direction. Same with the, the allies here. But what that means is that Assad's Fist, uh, the Brotherhood member, has been able to get his Cav around the side. And you can see he's trying to sneak his cav around here. But I don't think Tiggs noticed that. I think a lot of the action, everyone's preoccupied really in what's going over here at the moment. So you can just about see in the background uh, Assad's cav right at the back. In the meantime, um, Scipio is sending in more guys here to attack myself. He's engaging more units. What I'm doing in the meantime, I'm moving the rest of my urbans into range here so what I can do I can do it more peeler damage and now what's going to happen here is Tigrand who had his cav over here is now going to launch his cav straight into this side here the downside of doing that that's going to leave his flank exposed but it's going to put the pressure straight on the center and it's going to give me a bit of an advantage so in comes Tig of his cav you can see it's charging through here and that's routed one unit 
over here now you can see Assad's fist is getting his guys into formation and getting ready to begin the assault. Let's have a look. Here we go. I'll just pause it for two seconds. He's coming in here. He's going to slap straight into the side here. I'm guessing that Tig's probably put his guys into guard mode. I like to think he has. And his guys are in a nice tight formation. So should minimize the damage on this strike. What Asset Fist could have really done is maybe potentially go right behind and go for the general or go in at an angle here. The reason being that these units are engaged. Once they're engaged and they get a charge from the rear, that's going to cause them to rout. In the meantime, what I've done here, I did have my six Praetorian cab, you can see here. I've launched two of the units which were here straight into the center. The reason being these urbans entangled upon my urbans. If I can go in for a nice little charge with my cav, get a charge through bonus and charge for probably one of the further units here, I can hopefully cause a bit of rout, uh, a bit of routing of these Scipii forces. So let's have a look. I've charged my guys in, I'm pulling them back. I've caused one unit to rout. Over here, you can see Assad's fist has gone in with a nice charge. One of these urbans has been depleted from 82 down to 11. So it really was devastating charge. He's pulling out his calf just to make sure that Tick can't get a counter charge. Kid Tick has managed to get that counter charge, and two of Assad's fists, no, three of his cab have now routed. Let's go back over here. I've now charged in my other two cab again, right into the center here. That's caused another little route. Now, here comes the, the crunch time. Lucius is going to throw in his cab. In comes the Wolf's member here, Exega, with his cab. So now we're going to have 12 Praetorian cohorts, 12 Praetorian cab charging straight into the centre here. So let's have a look what's going to happen. We've got these guys coming in from the side. I've pulled my cab out and now I'm going to engage the rest of my cab. So here they come. If you have a look, I've kept my cab from a farther distance. The reason why I've kept them from a distance is not to keep them away from the actual uh, archer that Spartan Leonidas has over there. But if you have a look on the data folder for the, uh, the cab, to make sure you get your full bonus, you need to be a distance of at least 30. Now, what does 30 mean? 30 is roughly from where that cab is now at the moment to where those units. So that's the reason why I kept them further back so I can engage these units with a devastating cab charge. And here they come, they're gonna come crashing straight in. You can see the momentum's going. I'm now gonna push my guys straight through. And effectively, the, uh, the middle player here, he's now being routed. He has probably got a couple of little urbans left. A couple of cab may come back, but we've pretty much been able to smash that centre player. Over here, Tig is now playing as defensively as he possibly can, because what's happening now is Assad's fist is punching as much as he can right into Tig here. He's going to try and take out this wing and try and envelop his probably come around the side. You can see he's got his urbans around the side. He's got a good formation there. Tig's going to try and bat him back with using his cav. Whilst myself, Lucius and Exega are now going to actually uh, play as aggressively as we can to first of all take out King Marcus and then move on to Spartan Leonidas. So effectively, we're going to leave these two Brotherhood members, these two SPQI unit players to last, whilst we try and take out the Scipii. So my cavs charged in, my infantry is all engaged, everything's going on. Uh, Spartan Leonidas is going to try and get a counter charge with his cav. But if you have a look, he's only got about two or three units left. And we've got an enormous amount of cav here. We're going to crash straight into him. That's probably going to cause his units to rout. Let's have a little glance over here. King Marcus has now abandoned his cav from over here. And he's now trying to help out Assad's fist to try and take out Tig. It's a really sensible, smart move to do because if he can try and free up all of these units by Assad's fist, he can then use them to actually help out Spartan Leonidas to actually fight the us, myself, betrayed. Lucius, the and uh, Exega. So a lot of uh, Exega's infantry is all being snagged up on, Luce, on uh, King Marcus's units here. On the meantime, though, my infantry is all. Now we're engaged, you can see here, uh, Heaven Biscuits. My guy's now engaged upon Spartan Leonidas. My cab, I'm gonna try and pull back and try and work out where I wanna try and charge them. 
Lucius again is going to come in to assist, he's going to move his infantry around and hopefully move these guys forward. In the meantime though, Tick is doing a really sterling job, he's managed to actually hold off um, Assad's fist. As you can see he's aggressively pushing on this flank here. Uh, Luce Tig is literally down to his last few men but he's hanging in there which is doing a really good job. Lucius is probably going to peel off one or two of these units to try and help out Tig. I'd like to think he is. He's probably chucking in some peeler before he does. Over here we're going to now charge in our cav into this little clump of Marcus's unit which is going to cause this general to rout thus therefore lowering the morale for the Skippy Eye player here. We can now go in with our cab charge and basically finish off this Skippy Eye player. In the meantime our infantry is slowly munching its way through Spartan Leonidas. There we go. I've got my cab properly around the back here again. I'm going to charge them into Spartan Leonidas infantry. This infantry is heavily depleted as well as being distorted due to being overwhelmed by overwhelming numbers as you can see all of my infantry is there and there we go King Marx is pretty much going to be finished this last little cab charge by the Wolves members probably finish off these guys there we go Spartan Leonidas is down to his probably his last couple of units he's now going to run them back to try and help out um, Assad's fist Assad's fist it looks like he's practically finished off Tig eventually Tig's units have started to rout but Tick is still holding in there. I'm guessing his guys are in guard mode, frantically trying to hold the line. I'm now going to push all my infantry forward. I want to try and attack Spartan Leonidas and therefore take him out. And therefore the only thing we're going to have left is Assad's fist. Sadly, Tig's general is finally routed. So Tig's literally down to two units of airbirds, it looks like. And those consist of... 19 oh now last unit of urbans he's down to and there we go it looks like tig has finally been routed so tig's out of the game but thankfully we've got plenty of infantry left we've got plenty of guys from lucius and plenty of guys from exager we're going to now push forward finish off assad's fist and hopefully bring home the victory for this epic battle so as i said at the beginning of the battle when it comes to rome versus rome What's going to win this battle is the Cav Charge, the Peeler Duel and outmanoeuvring. Assad's Fist did an absolute excellent uh, attempt at trying to outflank Tig. Tig did a really good job in actually being able to deflect that and able to actually defend his lines by using his Cav. Sadly, uh, the, the member Prime, uh, First Prime of the COR clan, sadly he made a few blunders there of his Peeler and that effectively cost him most of his peeler for all 40 units of the urbans therefore that gave me the upper advantage for my urbans to use their peeler without being killed and secondly I was able to go in with a decent cav charge there and I had great support from Lucius um, to actually finish him off and then having a look at Exager again he did really well with that town watch I'm surprised that managed to absorb so much peeler and Exager, as you can see, got plenty of units left. Sadly, Marcus was left on the wing there, and effectively, he was left to defend himself um, with both my cav as well as uh, Exager's cav smashing into him. Sadly, I didn't manage to catch all of the fight with Lucius from the Heaven Clan. As you can see, activity was going on all over the battlefield, so it's near impossible to give you a, a full commentary on everything that was exactly going on. I think everybody's pretty much wrapped up. I think the only thing left is this one unit from Spartan Leonidas. These last few urbans. I'm going to charge in my cav here, try and finish them off. And in comes Lucius with his urban cohort on engagement. They rout, and that finishes the battle for this. So, guys, I hope you really enjoy that battle. Again, it's going back to a good old classic crunch match, a Rome versus Rome 31k, looking at your standard tactics to try and clench a victory so it was a clear victory at the end of the day but it wasn't easy by any stretch of imagination the opposition played really well hats off to Assad's fist and Spartan Leonidas and first prime and King Marcus you guys played exceptionally well if you have a look at the kill count uh, Tick got in a really good amount of kills 1151 I got in 1786 
Wolves got in 1,000 and Lucius C. Solo got in 1,294 kills. So on the kill front they've done really well. Assad's Fist got in a decent 1,221 kills and the other three members sadly only got in just shy of a thousand kills. Because three of us used the Julii faction, the good thing is I can actually see all of the kills that everybody else did in the actual Julii faction. So we can have a look at my kills, we can have a look at Tig's kills, and we can have a little look at the, the Wolves member kills. If we have a look at the Wolves member, um, it looks like most of his units are fairly standard with their kill counts. You're looking at kills between 40 to 50. One unit of his Praetorian cohort got in a decent 145 kills. I believe that's probably when it went into that good cav charge against that clumped up unit of uh, Marcus from the, the King's Clan. If you have a look at my kills, a lot of my units got in 100 plus kills. One of my Praetorian cav got in over 200 kills. Shows you how devastating a good cav charge can be when you play your cards right. And if you have a look at Tig, a lot of his um, units uh, got in about 50 to 60, a couple of units towards 100 kills, and that's because at the end of the day, Tig had to play very defensively. Um, if you look at his kills, they're fairly evenly spread, so he's done exceptionally well. So um, if we have a look at experience gains, uh, I managed to get a few experienced chevrons on my cav. Um, yeah, and I think I was the only one who managed to get any experienced chevrons. And I think that basically is just down to the amount of kills that those units managed to, to knock up. So guys, I'll finish the recording here. Thank you so much for actually taking the time out to actually check out the video. I hope you guys enjoy this. Again, I wanted to bring back a good old classic 31k Rome vs Rome crunch match. 4 vs 4. You can't get much better than that. Um, please guys, don't forget to uh, leave a little comment. Don't forget to give your thumbs up. If you can, I'd love you guys to actually share this video. And if you haven't already checked out some of my early videos, please do. I've got plenty of 31k on this channel and plenty of tactics and tips and how-to tips videos. So please go and check them out. Let me know what you think. And if you haven't already subscribed, again, please do. So uh, all the best guys. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you guys soon. Bye now.